The following question reads that beta carotene is responsible for the orange color of carrots. Uh, we don't need that information really. It's it. And then it says that it can be oxidized by concentrated KMnO4. So he is trying to oxidize it using KMnO4. Uh, when an individual molecule of beta carotene is oxidized in this way, many product molecules are formed. And then he's saying how many of these product molecules contain a ketone functional group. Now the first thing we're going to discuss is uh, what does concentrated KMnO4, what does it really do to this molecule? Now remember, it's, uh, there are no OH groups in this molecule, so it's definitely not an oxidation of alcohols or an aldehyde. The only functional group that's present in, that's consistently present everywhere is the double bonds. So what does KMnO4 do to double bonds? So we're going to first discuss the oxidation of these alkenes. Now the first thing is, whenever you have an alkene, uh, an alkene would look something like this, and there would be groups attached to the, these uh, carbon atoms that are involved in the double bond. Uh, so different groups attached. The first thing that's going to happen is that the double bond is going to completely break. And then there are going to be three scenarios. If the double bond breaks and the carbon that was previously making a double bond was bonded on two sides by a hydrogen, which basically means that there were two hydrogens on this side. Then, and the double bond breaks into two fragments. One side breaks away, the other side also breaks away. Now, if this side breaks away and there were two hydrogens attached, one over here, one over here, then this structure or this fragment would get oxidized into carbon dioxide and a water molecule. Scenario number two is that the double bond breaks and this carbon atom, remember we are, we are focusing on this fragment over here, this carbon atom. So scenario number two is that this carbon atom, on one side there was a carbon chain denoted by R, and on the other side there was hydrogen. Then this one would change into, it would change this particular carbon, focus on this carbon atom. It would first change into an aldehyde, which would eventually then further get oxidized into, focus on the carbon atom, this would change into a carboxylic acid. So carboxylic acids are going to be produced. And remember, all the changes are happening to that carbon atom, not the rest of the molecule. The R remains as it is, wherever it was. The carbon that was forming the double bond after it has broken away changes, changed into an aldehyde, which then further got oxidized into a carboxylic acid. Now let's focus on the third scenario. Scenario number three was that you have a double bond, the carbon breaks away, and the carbon was bonded on both sides by carbon chains. This type of fragment would change into a ketone. The C in the middle would change into double bond O. And there's R over here. So three different scenarios. Let's go over them once again. So let's try and oxidize these molecules. Uh, and let's start with the first one. And all the double bonds. What, what's going to happen is we're going to break all the double bonds. So all the double bonds are going to be broken. Strong oxidation, so lots and lots of fragments are going to be produced. And let's start with these two carbon atoms, the ones that were making double bonds. I'm going to get rid of the double bond in between because that's gone. So let's rub the double bond off. And what would it change into? If you focus on this carbon atom, on both sides it was bonded to a carbon chain. This carbon atom also on both sides was bonded to a carbon chain. This is scenario number Three, if the carbon in the double bond was on both sides bonded to carbon chain, it changes into a ketone. So I'm going to just do that. I'm going to change this into a ketone. So let's add double bond O and a double bond O over here. Both of them would change into ketones. Let's move to the next double bond. This carbon atom over here, this carbon atom over here. And I'm going to rub off the double bond in between. That's broken now. Now focus on the carbon atom. This carbon atom is only bonded on one side by a carbon chain. This carbon atom only bonded to a carbon chain on one side. So both of them would change into carboxylic acids. So make them into carboxylic acids. Double bond O and OH. So I've changed them into, carbon, uh, into carboxylic acids. Move to the next one, double bond. This carbon atom, this carbon atom. Get rid of the double bond in between. Now focus on this carbon atom, on both sides it's bonded to carbon chains. So this would change into a ketone, double bond O, whereas this one would change into a 
carboxylic acid because if you look at this carbon atom only bonded to carbon chain on one side focus on the next double bond this carbon atom this carbon atom get rid of the double bond in between this carbon atom is on one side bonded it's only one side bonded to a carbon chain so that would change into a the same would be true for this carbon atom it's only bonded on one side by carbon chain only on one side it's bonded to a carbon chain so it would also change into a carboxylic acid let's move now it's, it's a very tedious process we have to do this step by step let's focus on the next double bond this carbon atom over here this carbon atom over here get rid of the double bond this would change into a ketone this would change into a carboxylic acid reason it was changing into a ketone because this carbon atom was on both sides bonded to carbon chains this one was only bonded to carbon chains on one side moving to the next one these two carbon atoms in the double bond and the double bond breaks what happens to the two carbon atoms this one on one side bonded to a carbon chain on one side bonded to a carbon chain so they would both be changing into carboxylic acids let's keep this going uh, we are almost reaching the end uh, double bond breaks get rid of the double bond this carbon only bonded on one side by a carbon chain so it changes into a carboxylic acid whereas this carbon atom is bonded on both sides by carbon chains so it's going to change into a ketone moving to the next one these two carbon atoms the double bond breaks in the middle uh, this carbon is only bonded to carbon on one side so this is your carboxylic acid and the same this one would also change into a carboxylic acid because uh, this carbon was only bonded on one side by by a carbon chain moving to the next one these two carbon atoms get rid of the double bond it breaks in the middle this one changes into a carboxylic acid because uh, carbon is only bonded on one side by a carbon chain this carbon over here is bonded on both sides by a carbon chain so this should be changing into a ketone uh, we are almost reaching the end this carbon atom this carbon atom uh, double bond breaks in the middle and this carbon atom is only bonded on one side by so it's carboxylic acid this one would also change into a carboxylic acid it was only bonded on one side by a carbon chain and finally this one get rid of this is the last double bond so get rid of the double bond uh, so the double bond is gone this carbon atom would change into a ketone and this one would also change into a ketone because both of them on both sides were bonded to carbon chain this one was also bonded on both sides by carbon chains now look at the number of molecules that you have had so lots and lots of molecules produced now the question was so it's a very time wasting question and i'm not sure how this question could be done quickly in an exam setting uh, although it could be done quickly by me if you're if you're very well practiced you can actually do this very very quickly you can very quickly identify the ones that have the ketone functional group so how many of these product molecules contain a ketone functional group so start finding the ketone functional groups now what i'm going to try and do is i'm going to start marking a star in front of ketone functional group so here i see a ketone functional group uh here's another one uh but they are the same molecule so that counts as one again i see a ketone functional group so that's uh my other molecule uh this one has carboxylic acids on both sides there's a ketone functional group over here so that's another one uh, this one carboxylic acids on both sides carboxylic acid on both sides uh, again i see a ketone functional group so that's another one uh, carboxylic acid on both sides but there's a ketone functional group over here so that's another one and then there's uh, two ketone functional groups over here so this entire molecule is one molecule over here so i'm going to count it as one because we had to count the number of products containing a ketone functional group so that's one let's count this ticks that's one then that's two then three and four and five and six so the correct answer to this question would be six and it took a very long time to get to this answer